Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron and today we are going to be going over the overclock builds that I use with the new Bolt Shark uh, crossbow. I've definitely been using the Bolt Shark the most and I have used the overclocks for it quite a lot. I'm the most comfortable with it out of the weapons so far um, and recommending these builds. I already did a video on just these builds without any sort of overclocks on them whatsoever. So if you are interested in seeing that, I would recommend checking out that video. For the crossbow, I had three builds, one for each of the uh, arrow types and which way I like to use them. This time I'm just gonna be going over one build for each of the overclocks that I use fairly frequently. However, you can switch these up, um, especially when it comes to like the clean ones, as you'll see. So our first overclock is quick fire. This one gives us a faster reload and a faster moving projectile. This one is really good. No downside to it whatsoever. I like stacking the extra reload speed because in tier three, you essentially have both these options. I don't really see the point in adding extra velocity to any of your shots. You don't need 300% velocity. The arrow is going to shoot pretty straight at 200% velocity. So you won't have to worry about uh, drop all that much unless you're shooting it across a very long cave system, which there's not usually a whole lot in this game. You might get them occasionally if you're doing like on-site refining and like sandblast or something. But at that point, it's going to be difficult to hit the shot no matter what kind of weapon you got, unless maybe you have the M1000, which you could use with this. Either way, I don't find it super necessary. I think the reload speed is better. It also counts for the swap speed and then you get down to about a one second reload time. Now, the way that you can build this is any way that you want with a crossbow. This is nothing but a bonus. The way that I usually build this one is going with either the electric bolts, if I'm taking this on a, an elimination mission, or if I just want to use it for big target damage, I'll take the electric bolts. If I want to deal with crowds, I usually go with the pheromone bolts, sometimes the chemical bolts, all of them are pretty good for that. Tier two, I'll usually go with more quiver size just so I can shoot more. The crossbow already hits a really nice amount of damage where you can one shot a lot of enemies. You could go with extra damage just so that you can one shot even more enemies, but it's not super necessary in my opinion. Um, it's completely your call though. In tier four, I really like the battle frenzy. You could go with the radio transmitter though if you find yourself launching bolts really far away, which you could with this one because it is easier to hit targets further away. And if that's the case, then take the radio transmitter. Otherwise, the battle frenzy is just really nice for moving around. And then in tier 5, this one kind of depends on which of the uh, bolts I took. If I took either of the special bolts here, I'll usually go with the potent special bolts. If I went with the electric ones, I'll usually go with the magnetic shafts. Um, fear can be useful with the chemical rounds though too. So this one's your call. Our second overclock is called the specialist. This gives us more special ammo and our special ammo has a longer duration effect. Now you'll see it doesn't have any because we haven't selected one of these. If you take pheromone darts, you can actually have more pheromone darts than you can regular darts, which I really like doing. That's the way that I usually run this one, but it works well with any of the other darts. You can go with chemical darts and make sure that you're killing more groups of enemies. This is really good on some of the lower difficulties, especially on things like Swarmageddon, where you can potentially kill multiple enemies with just like one grunt's body, or on point extracts where enemies spawn pretty frequently. The taser bolts are useful too if you want to take this on a elimination mission against dreadnoughts because the electric bolts are really good at just slowing the dreadnoughts down. You, this way you can slow them longer and you have more of them. So pick whichever of the bolts you enjoy. I like taking the pheromone bolts with this one. In tier two, I pretty much always take the expanded quiver. This is just so that I get even more bolts. You can have then uh, 19, which I think actually goes up to 20. It seems like I usually have like 20 bolts with this or 21 bolts. I don't remember because um, I don't think it counts the one bolt on it and I think these numbers always round up. So it might be that you have 21 pheromone bolts and then 20 regular bolts. Uh, I really like running this. It's also great with the chemical bolts because then I think you have 12 in total because I think it doesn't count the one on it and you get 11. I could be wrong about this. I might be like one off with each of these. And then the taser bolts, you would get 17, I think. And they last for about 12 seconds. Chemical bolts last for 10 and a half seconds and the pheromone bolts last for a whole 13 seconds. Um, this makes it so your pheromone bolts can last a very long time. You can put them on high value targets like detonators, oppressors, Praetorians, um, and just let the swarms attack themselves. That's really useful and that's usually what I use this for because this takes you a long time to run out of shots with the bolt shark. It's not the fastest way to kill enemies, but it can add up over time, especially if you're not finding tons of nitra. Tier three, it's your choice. Whichever of these you find more useful, take. I usually like the reload speed, especially with the wet with the uh, bolt swap speed. I keep wanting to say weapon swap speed, and it's not a weapon swap speed; it's the bolt swap speed. The velocity is great too. You can hit enemies a little bit easier from longer ranges with it. Completely your call, whichever one you like. 
In tier four, same thing. If you find yourself missing your bolts, take the radio transmitter. That way you can get them back at longer ranges. It's kind of handy just to get them back quickly. Battle Frenzy is nice though too, because it does let you have a little burst of speed. And then in tier five, I like going with the potent special bolts for this one. It makes it so that your uh, pheromone bolts last 17 seconds or just about 17 seconds. That is a very long time for something to be affected by the pheromone bolts. It makes it really easy for you to ignore that enemy a lot of the time, especially if it's something like a bulk detonator, just shoot it on there and just watch the swarm attack them. This is the way that I usually build specialists, but you could build it other ways. You could go with the taser bolts and go with magnetic shafts. You could go with the chemical bolts and go with like Banshee module, or you could go with the potent bolts. That way they last longer. Um, you could also do the same thing with the taser bolts if you just want to use it for the status effect of slowing down big things. Then we move on to our balanced overclocks and we have the cryo bolt and the fire bolt. And these both work pretty similar and I actually build them both the same way and they kind of work for the same job, but they have different effects. So once you hit an enemy with either the fire bolt or the ice bolt, this will then cause that enemy to either burn or freeze. This is an effect that is applied over time though. It doesn't go instantly like your cryo grenades do or like the incinerary grenades do. It does take time for it to set up. All of your regular bolts are now non-retrievable. So taking something like radio transmitter with this one just doesn't really make sense because you can't get them back. And uh, in exchange for this, you lose 25 direct damage and 25 area damage. This goes for both of them. Um, that's why I'm kind of wrapping both these up into the same category because I build them the same way and they're functionally the same. It's just one is fire, one is ice. Which one do you want more? Ice is generally better against bugs. Fire is generally better against robots. Both are pretty good though in either situation because you're probably going to be fighting bugs with robots. So for this, I like taking the pheromone bolts. The reason for this is that you can stick a ice bolt or a fire bolt onto a single enemy. Hopefully it's a tanky enemy because lower enemies like regular grunts you still will kill pretty much instantly with this. Uh, and then shoot them with the pheromone bolt. That way everything tries to rush around them and then the fire spreads or the ice spreads to those enemies. This can be really useful for just clearing up hordes quickly and that's mostly what these accelerate at. The firebolt also has its own effect of igniting anything that can be ignited just by the firebolt coming in close contact with it. So this counts for the driller sludge. This can also count for the mushroom gas and the fungus bog. So if you shoot it over the top of that, it can ignite multiple sources. It can also ignite uh, any of the death clouds from the Praetorians or from the uh, oppressors. And it can also help build up heat over time because it will gradually build up heat. So if you're fighting something like Nemesis, fire is really good against Nemesis. Uh, anyway, aside from that, in tier two, I usually go with extra ammo. Um, pretty much your normal bolts are now special bolts. Um, kind of think of them as like the taser bolts where you can't get them back anymore. It's usually best just to have more of them than necessarily more damage. Uh, you could go with special bolts too. That one works as well if you want more pheromone bolts, but I find that I have plenty of pheromone bolts. So usually I just stick with the extra bolts. Again, since our bolts are non-retrievable now, it's kind of best to have more of them. In tier three, I go with reload speed. I really like it, but the increased velocity can really help too. That way it's easier to hit your shots on the target that you want to hit it on. So either one of these is a great option again. In tier four, there's no reason to go with the radio transmitter module. Um, you can get your pheromone bolts back with it, but you can probably just go pick them up. Battle Frenzy is usually a better choice here. And then in tier five, I go with the special bolts. This is just so that they uh, attract more enemies when I hit something with the pheromone bolts. All right, then we move on to one of my favorite overclocks. This is Bodkin Points. What Bodkin Bolts does is make it so that all of our normal bolts when we hit an enemy will bounce into other nearby enemies. This does come at the cost of losing us direct damage by 75. That's a lot of direct damage that we lose. And we also get a slightly longer reload time. However, this is actually pretty good for clearing up hordes. You can kill hordes fairly fast. It will try to bounce into the nearest enemy and it will still be stopped on solid objects. So if there's an enemy right next to one another and there's a little hill, you may just hit one enemy, go into another enemy and then hit the hill rather than it bouncing into that next enemy. It will just try to prioritize the nearest enemies to it. Um, it seems to have fairly long reach though as to where it goes to the next enemy. So think of this one similar to magic bullets. Really, you can take any of the tier one special bolts, whichever one you like the best. If you like pheromone bolts, take that. If you like chemical bolts, take that. If you like taser bolts, take that. They all work really well with this. I switch between them pretty frequently for this. I'll just pick the chemical bolts. In tier two, I do go with the broadhead bolts. This gets us more damage and more uh, area damage. This makes it so we are more consistent at killing normal enemies because with this, we can just one shot body shot normal grunts, I believe. Um, we can also still one-shot headshot slashers, and I think we get really close to grunts, or I mean guards. 
Um, so there's a higher chance of us bouncing into enemies and killing them. I think we can also one shot body shot at, at least the weak spot on a regular Mactera and I think like half health tri jaws or maybe more than that. It's it's really nice. This one makes it so you can clear up hordes pretty easily. Even if you miss this one, it's not that big a deal because you can still retrieve your bolts. So really the only downside to this, at least when I've used it, is that it doesn't do as well against single targets, which the crossbow already does okay in single targets. And uh, it does have a longer reload, which I usually take faster reloads in tier three. It just makes it so that the reload speed is not as noticeable. And since we can pick up our bolts, I'm okay with not having the extra uh, velocity from the reinforced string. Tier four, again, it's your choice. Battle Frenzy works for just getting you more movement speed. Radio transmitter module is also great if you find yourself missing a lot because you can retrieve these bolts. So that's an option too. pick whichever one you'd like. And then in tier five, it's also your choice. You can go with the uh, potent special bolts. This makes it so the effects are longer. Great. You go with magnetic shafts if you're running this with like the IFG or if you want to run it with the taser bolts. That way it will prioritize enemies at least with the first hit uh, that are being electrocuted with the bolts. So you can bounce it more easily into enemies if you'd like. You can also slow down things like dreadnoughts. It's pretty great. And you can have the Banshee Fear module if you find yourself missing again. You can still potentially fear enemies or if you find yourself intentionally missing then you could take something like the radio transmitter to get them back. And then our last overclock is the Triforg Volley. This makes it so we shoot three bolts at once. Uh, these do spread out over time, but they're pretty clustered together at the start. These do reduce damage overall, although you get more maximum ammo. So we have 24 bolts now and our reload speed is cut down by quite a bit. We can't reload as fast. Oh, also our bolts are no longer retrievable. The way that I like to build Triforg Volley is going for all damage on it and taking it on missions like for Dreadnoughts. It can also be pretty good on like escort missions or any place where you just want to do high damage to big single targets. For this, I'll usually go with the Taser Bolts in Tier 1. Um, this, these just work really well against the Dreadnoughts because they slow them down. And they also pair really well with the Magnetic Shafts, which gets us even more damage, which I like running with this. Tier 2, it's really your choice. I found that all of these are pretty great options. Broadhead Bolts gets you more damage so that you can do even more burst damage when you want to use it. Uh, increased Quiver is usually what I take just because you get more shots with the crossbow then, so you can potentially kill more things with it. But special bolts could also work if you just want more taser bolts. In tier 3, I like going with the increased reload speed. This is, again, just to get our reload speed down so it doesn't take a while to reload. You could just opt for taking Born Ready with this, not worry about the reload speed, and just go with the reinforced string so that it's easier to hit those shots, especially at long ranges. Tier 4, there's no point going with the radio transmitter module because we can't get our bolts back, um, especially if we're taking taser bolts, then we can't get any of them back. So Battle Frenzy makes the most sense, and it's very likely that we're going to kill something with this when we shoot it, either into a crowd or into a large enemy. So Battle Frenzy triggers fairly often for us to at least run back and reload our weapon again. And then in Tier 5, I go with Magnetic Shafts. This just makes it so if I throw an IFG on something, like a Dreadnought, I can stick two Taser Bolts into it, slow it way down, deal damage over time, and then shoot it with the Triforg Volley, and all of them are going to go pretty much right into the Dreadnought. If it's the Twins, it doesn't even matter where I hit them. If it's either the regular Dreadnought or the Hive Guard, once I move into position, it's going to do a lot of damage to that Dreadnought. So those are my builds for the Bolt Shark with all of its overclocks. Next up, we'll probably be taking a look at the Coil Gun, because I think I have the most experience with that next, and then probably the Microwave Gun, the Shard Diffractor for last, because I still haven't tried all of their overclocks out a whole ton. Um, some of them also function a little bit weird. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it helped you out. Thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. And if you'd like to be a part of it, you can. There are links down in the description. Thanks everybody who does that. It does help out the channel a lot. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.